You just heard our live report from that cruise ship heading back to Texas after a passenger was quarantined who may have handled specimens from Ebola victim Thomas Eric Duncan. And I want to know what my experts think about all of this. So joining me now is Dr. Devi uh, Nampia Parimple. She is an assistant professor at NYU School of Medicine and Mary Schiavo, former inspector general of the Department of Transportation. She's now an attorney for victims of transportation accidents. So Mary, this is you know, exactly what, what you do uh, because and, and, and talk about all the time. What do you think about what we just heard from Eric Lufer aboard that ship? All the precautions, is it necessary? Well, it's necessary for a couple reasons. One, if this person does turn out to have any kind of symptoms, they're going to have to find and track all the people on the ship. But it's also necessary because, once again, I mean, the country has to get control of this situation. We had one person on an airplane, and we're now tracking 900 people. We had one person on a ship, and there are, you know, a couple thousand on a ship. We can't, can, the country cannot continue on this way. That's just two people. Can we imagine if it's 10, mm -hmm. if it's 100? And so, yes. Yes, it's necessary, but we must get control because this is this is absurd. There's just a lack of common sense all the way around. How do you get control? Because in the beginning, the official said, "Oh, you shouldn't worry about it. It's you know, it's hard to spread. It's probably not going to come here to the United States." And on and on and on. And now we see this. What do you do, Mary? Well, I, I think we do exactly what the you know what Washington does not want to do. We have to put in travel restrictions. Mm. They have been used literally since the Middle Ages, and they are effective. Every country in Africa has now put them in place, and some of them have used them to wipe out uh, Ebola in their own country. Um, all the you know the several countries have done it, and of course you restrict people who have had any contact with Ebola. That would have eliminated these two cases, and you do not allow unnecessary transportation to and from Ebola-stricken countries, especially since the United States military is now providing transport. Okay, okay. Dr. Devi, you, you, Mary is saying you got to get on the same page. She's also saying travel restrictions. But speaking of getting on the same page, President Obama has appointed Ron Klain as, as the Ebola czar. Do you think that'll help? I think it's good that we have an Ebola czar, so I'm definitely in favor of that. Uh, I think that what we need is someone who's smart and capable, which he seems to be. So, you know, it's, it's important for him to get the right team of advisors. So he'll need people, let's say, you know, from the nursing side, from the medical side, from pharma, even from facilities. Like, let's say in the hospital, you know, for example, this person that's on the cruise ship, they're concerned that they might have gotten exposed from something within the facility, let's say the blood that was being transported. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to get some input from those folks. And then, of course, you know, in terms of the transportation and the travel restrictions. So it's it's actually involving so many different things. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope this Ebola czar will be able to coordinate it all and come up with an effective plan. What you're saying, Dr. Devi, is, is you said, I hope he has a right set of advisors because he's regarded as an excellent manager, but he does not have a health care background. Are you saying, does that matter? Uh, I don't think he needs to have the health care background, but he has to be able to understand what the advisors are telling him, you know, and then execute that plan effectively. So if he comes up with a plan, he has to be able to adapt uh, to changing circumstances, too, which is what's been happening throughout this whole situation. Mm -hmm. uh, did, I, I'm sure you heard yesterday a passenger on a flight from Nigeria to New York's JFK airport died in his seat following a fit of vomiting prof profusely. I hate to say that, but that's what happened. The CDC and, and customs officials were called and, and after what is being described as a cursory exam by the CDC, it was determined that the man did not have Ebola. Is it possible, though, to rule it out that quickly, Dr. Devi? Well, if he died uh, right on the plane and they got the specimens like the vomit and the other bodily fluids, then they should be able to rule it out. Because if you're in the later stages of Ebola where this would happen, you know, you've got virus throughout your bodily fluids, so it's easier mm -hmm. to test. It's hard to find the Ebola virus when you don't have any symptoms because yeah. it's not at enough high concentration in your blood. Hey, Mary, I want to talk about Republican Congressman Peter King. He says that there are 70 to 100 patients arriving every day at the, at the airport from countries where Ebola is rampant, or passengers at least. Uh, he is demanding to know what the protocols are for when the passenger falls sick. What are they? Do we know specifically? 
Uh, well, there are uh, loose guidelines, unfortunately. The CDC has the power, actually it's the Secretary of Health and Human Services, has the power to stop, to quarantine, etc., has all of those powers and has delegated them to the CDC. The, the CDC may stop anyone that has a communicable disease. Uh, Ebola is one of the particularly enumerated ones and the public health laws allow it, uh, but that's where it kind of breaks down after that. While they can stop, inspect, examine, and quarantine, then they have to rely on, you know, state and local officials and, and health facilities because the CDC is very limited. Every state has the legal ability to do that. Some states it's a felony if you don't comply, others it's right. a misdemeanor. So it's kind of a patchwork quilt of laws, but there is the power to do that. Mary, Dr. Devi, thank you. Have a great weekend. We appreciate you. Coming up,